The new Windows 11 Settings app is mainly a navigational rework of the old Windows 10 Settings app. The menu has been simplified, reducing the number of clicks to get to other areas. Some functions have been moved to different categories. New functions added and a couple of settings removed. If we look at the Windows 10 on the left, you see that all these items have been moved over to a vertical list in Windows 11. Going back to Windows 10, if you click on an item, all the other categories would disappear and you would see that particular item's subcategories are listed in the left-hand panel. But in Windows 11, you'll see that they're all listed there while the top-level categories are still listed to the left. Besides the navigational improvements, you'll see that not much else has changed. If we examine the list on both sides, you'll see that they all still exist, or at least most of them do. And if we look in the subcategories, you'll see that they mostly exist in the same place as they were before. But there's been a couple of things that have been removed and a couple of things that have been added. But mostly you'll find that things have been relocated to a different menu item. And I'll go into each section to show you exactly what's happened. As a matter of fact, here's the one for the system directories, which shows you which one's been moved to where. Starting with the system listing, you'll see that everything here is exactly the same, except they've added in a couple of the items that used to be located elsewhere, activation, troubleshooting, and recovery. But again, uh, these are not new functions. They've just been reorganized into this listing. Now devices have been combined with Bluetooth, and you'll see here there's a new entry for a camera where you can add remote cameras, and if you have a connected camera, you can add that as well. A plus, if you go back to the menu, you'll see your phone has been moved here from its location on the main menu. Some sections of the setting app has status about that particular section right here at the top above all the settings. Uh, some don't. They have nothing up here at all. But a network and internet thing that used to be status is now displayed at the top. This is another section that has some new entries. Uh, you see here, they're all exactly the same as what they were in Windows 10. But if you go all the way to the bottom, you'll see the advanced network settings down here uh, that you can go in here and look at every single one of your settings. Many of these were in a separate uh, dialog box uh, for Windows networking. Now the personalization section is the same. Uh, except if you go all the way down to the bottom, you'll see a new section about device usage. The only real configuration here is to turn each device type on or off. But what's important to note is this is about getting personalized tips, ads, and recommendations from Microsoft. It comes turned off. I recommend leaving them all that way. Like a lot of the other sections, the apps has the same features it had before, but it has this additional one called optional features. Now, if you click on it, and you'll see a list of a whole bunch of things that are already installed uh, down here below. Uh, a mix of different things like languages, uh, notepad things, all sorts of stuff. You should review this just to take a look. If you want to add a feature, again, you come down here, and you can select some of these things that you may need. The uh, list is way too long to go into here. Over in the account section at the very top, you'll see who you're logged in at, which is very important when you're trying to make changes to make sure you're doing the correct account. There is one new section, Windows Backup has been moved here, uh, and that's so that you can make sure that your uh, backups for that particular account is correct. You will have to sync your account for the first time, probably. The rest of the settings are about your apps and your preferences for them. The only difference here in time and language is that language and region have been combined into one area, which makes sense that you have those uh, coordinated in one area. Now, in gaming, everything's uh, the same as far as the first three items. The only difference is that Xbox networking has been removed, and it's uh, handled through a separate app. It's not part of the system. Now, accessibility used to be called ease of access, and there's nothing new here except the uh, visual effects section here. You click on it, and you can take a look and tweak some of your settings for your system. And again, the rest remain the same uh, as they were in Windows 10. Now, security has been moved from its old home underneath Windows Update up here to privacy. Makes more sense, but first I want to go back up here to the app section because there's one setting that's missing uh, from security, and that's how to find the background apps. You have to go up here to apps and apps and features and find the app you want to uh, select. 
click on the three dots, go to advanced options, and then you can go in here and you can see background app permission there. And you can make your selection here of how you want it to uh, act. Uh, you can also, by the way, while you're here, go to run on login. This is your startup section where you can determine uh, what's running at startup. Okay, enough of that detour. Back here to privacy and security, you go down here and you'll see app permissions down here. And there's some additions here as well. Now you can restrict the access to your documents, your pictures, call history, you name it just about. Uh, they did add one new one. Uh, the, besides your downloads folder, and your documents and all that, you're now your music library can be restricted. There are two more options down below about screenshots. Uh, they're a little obtuse. Uh, if you're really interested in privacy, I'll let you investigate on your own. Now, the Windows update, like I said, security has been removed, but there's a couple other things as well. Uh, you'll find that there's only a few things here actually about updating. If you go back to the system directory, you'll find the things that were moved. Uh, for example, the uh, activation, troubleshooting, and recovery were moved from down at the update section. So if we go back to the Windows updates section again, again, there's very few things listed here. Uh, some of the other things that were, have been moved as well. Uh, you only have these left that actually have to do an update. Uh, some of them are removed here. Find my device and for developers are no longer underneath update. Even with the improved navigation and the logical grouping of items, it's probably easiest just to type in something here in the search box to find whatever setting you're looking for. Once you see the setting that you're looking for, just click on it and you'll jump right to that setting within the new hierarchy. Well, there you have it, the Windows 11 Settings app. And for those people who are complaining that you had to jump between the Settings app and the Control Panel, that's mostly been resolved. So there you have it. I'm sure we're going to see more changes in the first few months as they tweak things even more. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like the video. And if you want some more, please subscribe to The Old Guy Geek and click on the bell to get notifications. You can also follow me on Facebook or Twitter. The links are in the description of the video.